Hello, my name is David Friedland and I'm with Texas Instruments. Welcome back to the online SysBIOS training workshop. In this portion, we will be discussing SysBIOS tasks. Tasks tend to be more sophisticated and powerful than other BIOS thread types. Unlike hardware interrupts and software interrupts, tasks can block, which means they can allow other threads to execute when waiting for some kind of event to occur or just because another thread has a higher priority. And when I say another thread, this includes hardware interrupts and software interrupts, which can both coexist in the same application as tasks. Like other BIOS objects, a programmer has a choice on whether tasks will be created statically in the application's configuration or dynamically during runtime. Tasks have an assigned priority, so they can preempt or be preempted by other tasks and this assigned priority can be changed during runtime based on the needs of the application. The BIOS scheduler always determines which thread is the actual one executing at any given time, and it will do this based on the thread's priority level and whether or not it is blocked while waiting for an event. Each task can be thought of as a logically complete and self-contained program segment and includes such elements as the function that executes when the task is running, a string name, and a priority that, as I previously mentioned, can change during runtime. Each task can also have an environment pointer that basically allows a unique data structure to be tied to that task instance. One essential concept to understand about tasks is that each task instance has its own stack. This is what allows tasks to block and differentiates them from software interrupt threads, which by definition must always run to completion. The fact that each task must allocate its own stack makes them more functional and easier to use, but also makes them, in terms of memory usage, a little bit more expensive, so they may be inappropriate for use in systems with highly constrained memory. Note that in the diagram above, both tasks are pointing to the same function to execute. This is perfectly acceptable, although not required, as long as the function is reentrant, meaning that it can be safely called again before its previous invocation has been completed. Tasks can call the function with arguments, which could allow the function in essence to know which task instance it was called from. As I previously mentioned, tasks differ from software interrupts in a very fundamental way. SWEs are threads that always run to completion. Although they can be preempted by higher priority SWEs and by hardware interrupts, they cannot block themselves while waiting for an event, and they must be implemented in a way that allows them to exit. Tasks, on the other hand, are often implemented as an infinite loop, only exiting when the application as a whole is shutting down or if the system resources are being changed in a fundamental way. When they need to wait for some kind of event to occur or resource to become available, they will block themselves using some kind of semaphore. Because of the way that tasks can block, their life cycle is much more complex than other threads. Each task instance maintains a state to track what their current status is at any given moment of time and the BIOS scheduler maintains and updates each task's status through the lifespan of the application. Any tasks that are created statically will be set up and made ready to run when the SysBIOS scheduler starts. Of course, if a task is created dynamically later, it will not reach the ready state until that time. When the BIOS scheduler recognizes that a task in the ready state can start executing, it puts it in the running state. A question that I will pose to you is, when does the scheduler put a thread in the running state? The answer is always when it is the highest priority thread ready to run. The scheduler guarantees that this is so. If a higher priority thread, which can be a task, SWE, or hardware interrupt, preempts this task, the scheduler will move it back to the ready state. If a task is running and is then blocked by a semaphore pen call because it is waiting for a resource or event, 
The scheduler will change the task status accordingly. When the task unblocks because the semaphore is posted by another thread, the scheduler will immediately move the task status back to the ready state so that it can run as soon as it is the highest priority thread that is ready. Although tasks generally run in an infinite loop, they can be terminated at any time. This includes during the running state if the task exits. It can also be terminated while it's in the blocked or ready state if another running thread calls the task delete API. I want to talk about the runtime API of the SysBIOS task module and most importantly how to create a task during runtime. If you look at the code snippet here, I have created three different variables. The first two are types defined by the task module itself. The first being a structure that holds all of the various task parameters. The second variable is used to store the handle of the task that we will create. By calling task params init, we can fill the param structure with all of the default parameter values. We can then easily update the parameters that we want with different values, in this case the priority and task size of the task, while not worrying about the others. We are also setting up an error block variable so that if the create failed, we could find out more information on why it failed. Finally, we call task create, which will instantiate the task instance and return back the handle to the new task. Also on this slide is a summary of the other API calls used to control a task. Thanks for listening to this portion of the SysBIOS online training. I hope it proved helpful. Please note that SysBIOS is included as a component to CoComposer Studio. However, if you would like to download SysBIOS as a standalone product, you can go to the webpage listed here. Also, if you have any questions about using SysBIOS, or if you would like to make suggestions on how to improve this training series, please post a comment to the TI E2E Forums BIOS page at the web address shown here. There are some very knowledgeable developers and users of SysBIOS who might be able to help you out. Good luck with your upcoming software development.